The future of Star Trek in terms of TV shows is filled with a lot of uncertainty at the moment. We've had a bunch of Star Trek shows end or be announced as ending recently, and with the future seeming very up in the air for Paramount as a whole, it is a little worrying seeing the trend that Star Trek is currently going down. Now before going deeper into this video, I just want to say that this isn't a Star Trek is dying or a Star Trek is on the way out kind of video, not at all. Trek is still going to have a huge presence on TV for the foreseeable future, and there is a clear attempt by Paramount to bring Trek back to the films as well in a big way, starting with Section 31 later on this year. But I think it is clear that TV shows are proving to either be too expensive or not bringing in the numbers that Paramount wanted, because we've gone from in 2022 having five airing and ongoing TV shows spread throughout the year, with another one on the way, to this year having only one Star Trek show confirmed to be continuing past its current season, with also the same show still on the way. No matter which way you cut it, that's a huge and drastic change in such a small amount of time. It feels like Paramount may have expanded far faster than they realised they should have with Star Trek on TV. Discovery Season 1 began airing in 2017, and from then until 2023, we saw constant expansion of the brand. They expanded to three shows in 2020, with both Picard Lord X both debuting their first seasons that year. They then grew to five shows in 2022, with both Strange New Worlds and Prodigy debuting that year, all the while having short treks coming out pretty irregularly alongside of all this, and technically also being its own show. So within five years, we had as many Trek shows ongoing as the entire rest of the franchise's history. From 1966 until 2005, we had six Star Trek shows. The original series in the 60s, the animated series in the 70s, The Next Generation debuting in the late 80s, Deep Space Nine and Voyager debuting in the 90s, and Enterprise debuting in the early 2000s. But TV as a whole has changed since then. Streaming models means that shows virtually never run as long as they used to anymore. In the 90s and early 2000s era of Trek, getting to 100 episodes was a milestone, as it meant so much for the show's future in terms of airing on television. But that is not the case anymore. 100 episodes doesn't really mean anything now, and due to shows getting more expensive, there's no real incentive to make shows last that long either. After five years of growth in the TV space, that all kind of began to come apart in mid-2023. Within the last year, we've had Star Trek Prodigy officially be cancelled by Paramount and later picked up by Netflix. We've had Star Trek Discovery and Lower Decks both announced as ending with their current and upcoming fifth seasons, and we've had Star Trek Picard officially end with its third season. Discovery's fifth season is currently airing, Lower Decks' fifth and final season will be airing towards the end of the year. Star Trek Prodigy does have a second season, which is already officially out in France, but there's no release date yet planned for the rest of the world. The show also has not been officially renewed for a third season. The only Trek show that is currently ongoing with renewal is Strange New Worlds its third season airing in 2025, and a fourth season coming likely a year later, or two years after that. The only other Trek show in the franchise's immediate future is Starfleet Academy, a show that has been in some kind of development since Discovery first aired, constantly changing eras, changing ideas, and they've settled on making it a 32nd century show. It begins filming this summer and is likely going to debut in either late 2025 or early 2026. There are no other current Star Trek shows planned or in development past that, at least as far as we know. Now, a lot of shows end with five seasons. So five seasons is nothing to scoff at, especially in the age of streaming, that is extremely impressive. Most current shows don't even make it to five. But for both Lower Decks and Discovery, however, I'm a little weary on congratulating both shows for ending at five seasons for one simple reason. It does not look like it was supposed to happen. Now, streaming loves to end shows at both three and five seasons due to money, contracts, cast, crew, whatever reason, these are the two seasons that a streaming show is likely to end at. But in the past, a lot of shows have known this and planned for this ahead of time. Discovery's cast has been extremely vocal in interviews about how they only found out the show was ending after it was pretty much done filming. They were then allowed to go back and film an ending. Going back and letting them film an ending essentially means the show was not cancelled, but it still feels like it was because for all intents and purposes, this was not supposed to be the ending for the show. If they'd had their way, there'd be a 6th and 7th season. Similarly to Discovery, Lower Decks is in the middle of their season right now in terms of production, but it's a case that's the same where people like Jack Quaid are already saying that they're looking to get the show a new home. If they're looking to shop Lower Decks somewhere else, then that doesn't really sound, to me at least, that this was the plan, that they've decided to end the show with five seasons out of any creative choice. Both Lower Decks and Discovery's decisions seem like they've come down from the top, from people at Paramount. Now I've seen certain Trek fans on Twitter, and even some of the articles that announced this, defending Lower Decks ending at Season 5 because the characters all receive promotions at the end of Season 4, and sure, I guess from a creative writing story perspective, it might feel like the point of Lower Decks has changed slightly because of this. But I still don't think the show should be ending if the creators and cast aren't ending it on their terms. I don't think we should be defending the show stopping here because it's clearly not coming from a place of the writers ending the story. They're having an ending forced on them. And sure, at least they get to give an ending, a lot of shows don't even get that lucky. But they still shouldn't be in this situation to begin with. Having both these shows end here has sparked some debate in terms of future and longevity of Strange New Worlds, and if perhaps Season 5 of Strange New Worlds is where that show bows out as well, which I kind of think is likely now. 
because this comes only days after Alex Kurtzman talked about 100 episode runs in this era of TV being impossible, mainly referring to Strange New Worlds. This is not an unusual comment, especially since given Strange New Worlds only has 10 episodes a season, we'd have to get to 10 seasons to reach that milestone. No way that would ever happen. But I think it's interesting that he's almost already setting up fans to prepare for the fact that Strange New Worlds will end far earlier than a lot of people want and expect, and that potentially once season 4 ends in 2026 or 2027, we'll get an announcement that the show is ending with season 5. Star Trek Prodigy is in a far more unusual spot. It was flat out cancelled and then removed from Paramount Plus, and it was quickly picked up by Netflix to air what at the time was mostly completed second season. The season was officially released without the cast and crew's knowledge in France last month, where it has been available legally since, but still no update on the show's release date in the rest of the world, or even any attempt to market it in the rest of the world, which, in my opinion, is a really bad decision. The longer it's out in France and not in the rest of the world, the more it will cause some complications in terms of viewers when the show officially releases on Netflix, which, it needs those Netflix numbers if it has any chance of getting a renewal for season 3. Prodigy is the last show that needs these kind of issues plaguing it, because it, it really is a great show and it's definitely worth a watch, it's just been kind of unlucky. Due to this, I'm really worried about how it will perform when it launches worldwide. I don't think the France release is harming the show much since it's not readily available in English over there, but it still isn't a good luck when one country has had complete access to the show for over a month and the streamer goes completely silent for it. Like Netflix is the rights holder for that show more or less, and they've not even talked about the fact it's out in France. There's no poster, no trailer, no release date. We've no real official look at season two and we don't know when it's releasing. This is just such a bad look for the show. For the future of Trek on TV, we have Starfleet Academy on the way, which is having the biggest set ever built for a Star Trek show, and it seems like it's going to be expensive and it's being used as somewhat of an attempt to bring in a whole new generation of fans. It's almost like the way the next generation in the 1980s was sort of being used as a new way to bring in Star Trek fans, to reinvigorate the franchise, because Next Generation, a lot of fans had not seen the original series and came into Next Generation as their first Star Trek, I think Starfleet Academy is going to be used similarly, where it's, it's being used as a show that you don't really have to have much of a background or a knowledge of Star Trek to really enjoy and get involved in. It's being aimed at a more young adult fanbase, and it's also aiming to give a more fresh and new perspective on the Star Trek universe that will be able to explain things to a new audience. I'm looking forward to this show honestly, but I am curious if potentially this show is being used by Paramount to bring in a new era of fans so that current shows going forward can be related to Starfleet Academy. Because if Strange New Worlds ends with Season 5, we could be looking at Starfleet Academy being the only ongoing Star Trek show alongside the movies. And I'm not sure how I feel about Starfleet Academy being the only Trek show, that seems a little unusual, so I'm wondering if maybe this is going to be sort of their gateway into the brand new era of Star Trek. There are no other Trek shows on the slate at the moment, but there are four to six movies in various states of development. I do kind of have to wonder if this is similar to what Warner Brothers is doing with DC. The very obvious answer is that, yeah, Paramount is broke, and a film making $700 million at the box office will always be better long term than a season of TV bringing in 10,000 new subscribers for a month. Should say, there is no way any Star Trek film will be making $700 million unless the fan base grows incredibly well over the next few years. Even the MCU films are struggling to hit 700 million at the moment. I don't think Star Trek will be. None of the reboot films even got close to that. So that's it. just to say though that movies that do well are much better than TV shows that do well in terms of money and longevity for a studio. But Warner Brothers unfortunately has had a habit in the past of massacring and destroying their TV shows on TV because they're planning on doing something similar in the movies. Like for DC, they make them change storylines, they make them get rid of characters because they're planning on using those characters or those storylines in a movie. And I guess I do gotta ask if getting rid of so many Trek shows makes it an easier sell to justify making so many Trek movies. Because one, you've got less saturation for certain characters, but if movies are one of the only places to see new Trek, then maybe some people are more likely to watch the movies than they would be if you had six Star Trek shows coming out on Paramount+. Plus. Like, it's definitely another option. Similarly to the Warner Bros comparison, they would make it so that you can't have Superman and Lois past season four because we're getting Superman in the movies. They don't want to oversaturate the character or that, I guess, genre in terms of DC. I'm wondering if the same thing here where it's like, you can't have Enterprise in Strange New Worlds on your TV anymore because we're going to start putting Enterprise stuff in the movies. Maybe something to consider there. But honestly, the real reason is likely just simply the Paramount expanded far too fast. They poured too much money into so many different track shows at once and what they were getting back was unfeasible and not comparative with what their output was. Now, I've seen a lot of people say that we're obviously getting another animated show to fill the lower decks gap, or we're obviously getting another live action show to fill in the discovery gap, but like, take Star Trek Legacy for example. That's a no-brainer show. So many people were asking for it. 
Picard Season 3 was getting some of the most love of any Trek since the 90s area. Any rational studio or company would have greenlit that show immediately given the success of Picard Season 3, and they didn't, and we have to ask why. Now, the reason is because they likely can't afford it, and outside of their two current shows, they can't expand past this. Like, take Starfleet Academy and take Star Trek Legacy. Star Trek Legacy is a show a lot of Star Trek fans want, a lot of Star Trek fans have been asking for, but how many new fans is that going to bring in? How many new fans is Star Trek Legacy going to bring in that weren't already watching the current Star Trek stuff? Take Starfleet Academy, on the other hand. That's a show that is being geared to bring in brand new fans, people who haven't really gotten a background in Star Trek yet, people who they can bring in, start looking into those Marvel fans, those Star Wars fans, and see if they want to watch a Star Trek show. Star Trek Legacy is unfortunately going to appeal to mostly Star Trek fans, people who are already watching this stuff. Starfleet Academy is the opposite. So from a money perspective, it's like, why spend so much on Legacy if it's not really going to bring in anybody new? Whereas we can spend a lot of money on Starfleet Academy and potentially double our fan base over the next five years. Like if Starfleet Academy does well, it has the opportunity to bring in so many new people. Now, I personally do not think we're getting another animated show to fill the gap. And I don't think we're getting another live action show to fill the gap. I think if we were getting either of these things, we would know by now. We'd have known for a while by now. They'd already be developing them. They'd already have been announced. But a year on from Picard Season 3's final, which I think as of next week, it's been a year since the final, the only show that has been officially announced is Starfleet Academy. And even then, Starfleet Academy was a show that we'd known about for years anyway. It just was officially greenlit last April. If there were any Trek shows on the way to fill these gaps, then we'd either already know heavy rumours about them, or we'd have heard something at some point, we'd have an official announcement, something, and we just, we have none of these things. Now look, it's completely and totally possible that I'm just being super negative, we could get an announcement ASAP, and I really hope we do. Best thing to happen would be a new show announcement. My gut is telling me that this is the reality of Trek on TV for the foreseeable future, and that Paramount is gearing more towards movies. Paramount are also very likely merging or selling to somewhere else, so it's also very possible that being more movie focused is just a better look for who the potential buyer is, that maybe this buyer is more focused on movies than TV shows, so axing some shows and having a ton of movies in development makes them more desirable. Who knows, this is all just speculation. But what do you think about all of this? Do you think I'm onto something? Is any of this likely? Or am I talking absolute nonsense? Let me know. A lot of this stuff I've talked about in other videos, like the Discovery Season 5 stuff I've talked about in my Discovery videos, my Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks theories here I talked about in yesterday's news video, and I covered some of the Prodigy stuff in my news video from last week. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of combine it all, theorize a little on what could be happening here with the future of Trek on TV. If you liked this video, maybe consider subscribing, liking, sharing it to someone you think might like it. That'd be a huge help, and I hope you enjoy the video and have an amazing day.